Atomic Heart is a game that I've been excited for for a while now. I'm a sucker for games with alternate timelines, especially if it takes place in a European setting. The newer Wolfenstein games did an amazing job with their alternate timeline, and so does Atomic Heart. By taking this route, it really allows the developers to take inspiration from a variety of settings, styles, and architectures to create an unbelievable world. Add in the robots and Bioshock style abilities and SHUT UP AND TAKE MY MONEY! So, it's disheartening to say that I have a lot of problems with this game, man. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. I feel like it could have used another year at least in development for some issues, but others would require a lot more work. I won't be spoiling anything in this review, so don't worry about that. The basic plot is that it follows a Soviet agent P3 as he fights through a scientific facility full of mutants and murderous robots to find out what happened for his master's sake. This rampage just happens to coincide with a new technological advancement known as the Collective 2.0, technology that is meant to connect everyone together in a way that will make everyone equal and give people all around the world convenience. That's something that we all love in this day and age is convenience. But there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you might think. So I'll start off with what I did like about this game because there is some fun to be had and there are some extremely incredible sights to gawk at. If I was basing this game on its visuals and style alone, I'd, I'd probably give it like a 100 out of 10 and I don't even do numerical scores. No joke, this game looks absolutely incredible almost all of the time. The developer clearly took a lot of design choices from 1950 Soviet Russia, which is obvious because it takes place there, but it also branched out with its eclectic architecture. Everything has this sleek, elegant, modern look to it while also being insanely wacky. Like they just took so many different aesthetic designs and mashed them together to create something unique. I was wowed constantly, especially in the game's many dungeons. Seeing a clear whale sculpture, for instance, with all of its like actual organs inside the whale capsule was so fucking cool. The team took a lot of time working on the animations because I think they look really awesome. I know some people didn't, but I think they did a great job on them. The reloading animations look almost as good as like the new Modern Warfare. Every enemy has their own unique animations and robots move in their signature clunky way that we're all used to. The looting animation may be one of my favorite in any game because you're able to use your glove to pull items out of cabinets and drawers. You don't actually need to go to every cabinet and manually search it and select items from it. Seeing all the items and paper fly out of cabinets as their doors swing open looks so cool. It's, it's really satisfying. It really never gets old. It looks really fluid and that was not something I was expecting from an indie team. I also wasn't expecting the shooting to be that good, but my expectations were blown out of the water. Guns aren't something that can be used incredibly often because resources are scarce, especially in the opening hours of the game, but goddamn did I ever chew through my ammo as soon as I got some because it's just so damn fun. Each gun actually has respectable feedback. The shotgun will literally send robots flying back 10 feet like they just got hit by a truck. Using the pistol to snag headshots gives you that dopamine rush that keeps you coming back to put some holes in those commie droids. Each weapon gets progressively better as you upgrade them with different attachments and modifiers that can be equipped. Upgrading them is really important, unless you want to get your ass handed to you all the time. Speaking of upgrading, the game tells you right from the get go that upgrading is really important. I didn't think anything of it, so I never really paid it much attention. That is until I started getting my ass handed to me at every encounter not even two hours into the game. So I went and upgraded my guns and character and lo and behold it actually gave me a bigger fighting chance. I know this seems like a no brainer but not many games have this crushing level of punishment for not upgrading. The upgrades are good though. You can upgrade each gun and the glove that's named Charles, he's actually your side companion for the game. This essentially upgrades your character P3. There's standard upgrades like increased health and less damage taken by lasers. There are other upgrades that unlock new powers to use in combat like a cryoblast and telekinesis. All of the upgrades felt important, like I was making a difference every time and not just getting a 5% boost to whatever I was upgrading. So yeah, those are all the aspects of this game that I felt were engaging and what I thought worked really well. But there's a lot more bad than good here. 
You've probably seen this everywhere by now, but one of the worst parts of this game is the writing and the voice acting. Wow, what a beautiful day. To say it's cringy, annoying, and smothering is an understatement. P3 is not a likable character in the slightest. He's always doing one of two things, whining about his situation or having to do a puzzle, or being incredibly vulgar to everyone that crosses his path for no apparent reason. I can count on one hand the amount of times that the writing and voice acting actually made me laugh like it was intended to. Great, let's go. Assuming you have purchased a ticket. A, a ticket? A fucking ticket? Are you stupid? Most of the time, the writing is incredibly stale, and it seems like Munfish really wanted every second of this game to be voiced. There is hardly any downtime for you to be able to actually explore this world without having your ears being assaulted by poor line delivery and an overabundance of exposition. You can't go anywhere without your glove explaining what the entire history and purpose of whatever area you are in is. By the two hour mark, I was ready to shove my head into a wall because I had about five minutes of silence. I don't understand why they did this, and if I have to hear the main character say crispy critters one more time, something in my brain actually might snap. But that's, I mean, ugh, crispy critters. Not only does it get annoying, but it takes away from this world for me. They spent so much time making it look this amazing and the writing doesn't allow me to have any sense of mystery or discovery when they are explaining everything to me like I'm five. I want to explore these locations and learn about them myself, not have this glove tell me every little detail about everything and everyone. When the game isn't yapping at you, you'll be fighting the game's many robotic and organic fodder. There's a huge emphasis on an unsatisfying Dying Light 2 style melee combat mechanic. It plays a big role in this game because as I said before, resources and ammo are scarce and if you want to conserve at least some ammo for the bigger bosses later down the line, you're gonna have to use this. Melee in this game just never feels right. At times your hits can feel incredibly light like you're playing Skyrim, but then other times enemies react really well giving you that power feedback that you want. It's just sloppy and it never syncs up properly. One on one engagements aren't bad, but doing the tango with more than one enemy is just... It's, it's not fun. It's not fun. I think this could have been improved if the game shipped with an FOV slider, which it didn't, and I really doubt that we're gonna get one in a patch. Also, because the combat seems to be like Doom Eternal style fast, fighting in small rooms can be infuriating. There were so many instances of me getting caught on an object in the environment, which led to me getting surrounded by robots that can't be staggered back enough for me to get out of their grasp. I am not typically a guy who gets angry when I play games. I play games to just relax and get immersed in a world, but there are countless times when this game made me want to freaking bash my controller off my head. There are a ton of tight spaces in the game's more open, explorable areas. There were so many times where I wanted to explore the various houses for loot and blueprints, but I kept getting attacked in these areas where you can't maneuver at all, so I just eventually stopped exploring altogether. I say exploring, but there really isn't much here worth exploring for anyway. Yes, there are tons of chests full of resources, and there are computers to read notes on if you really want to do that, but I never found any of them really overly compelling. The only thing that is worth your time are the blueprints, and from what I can tell, all of them are randomized so you never know when or where you're going to find something. Honestly, even with the blueprints out there, I just went from story beat to story beat. The overworld sections are a slog and enemy placement is so goddamn atrocious that you can't walk more than 10 steps without being attacked by something. So naturally, if you're getting attacked in an action game like this, you'd want to attack them, right? Well, you're wrong. You can't do that. You get punished for doing that. If you attack any robot out in the open, you get reinforcements called on you because of a security level you gain for attacking robots. You heard me right. I... Oh my, like that's so, why, why did they add, why did they add that? That's so stupid. You literally get punished for attacking the game's enemies in the overworld. It's just, well, it just fucking blows my mind. God forbid if you want to go into that house over there because there's some loot in there you want. If there's an enemy in there and you attack him, good luck. It's so infuriating to feel like you're being punished for taking in these sites and exploring a world that I'm guessing they made to be explored. At least the bulk of this game takes place in underground laboratories. 
that are basically this game's version of dungeons. These sections offer the most visually diverse and interesting settings anyway, but even these areas get bogged down by issues, man. Like, it's... Oh... A big problem is the sheer repetition of having to find several items to unlock a door over and over and over. There's always an obstacle that sends you on an hour-long hunt to find vials, robot parts, or explosive material. This really isn't a huge issue in theory because a lot of games do this. But instead of having five different paths that lead you to each one in a loop to get the requisite parts in one go, this game sends you to multiple different floors and corridors to get the requisite parts. Every time you get one, you have to go back to whatever console or mainframe that you're interacting with and put the puzzle piece in to continue on to the next step. It flows like a turd down an escalator. Yeah, that's good. It, it really feels forced to impede your ability to progress and make the game longer. Which, honestly, the game isn't even that long. You can beat it in like seven hours, so if you took out all these freaking puzzles, you could probably beat it in five. I was initially surprised by the lack of bugs, and a lot of reviewers before I even started playing the game praised it for its performance and lack of bugs. But even they started to rear their ugly head a couple hours into the game. Some are worse than others, but also some have a higher tolerance for bugs than others. Some of these issues may really rub you the wrong way, and some people will be fine with having them in the game. I'm usually a guy who isn't extremely bothered by bugs as long as it doesn't severely hinder the experience and it doesn't feel unfair. Too bad Atomic Heart has some really anger provoking bugs. For people boasting about the performance, my game hardly ever kept a solid frame rate of 60 FPS. Now keep in mind that I am playing on the Xbox Series S, so that could very well be it because it's not as powerful as the Series X, but regardless I think it's a shame and it's really annoying. I'm not overly bothered by stutters in a lot of games, but it's so jarring because the game has massive dips below 30 at times, like, it's not just like a little bit under 60, you can tell it dips severely. And that's even after a patch, so. Now the game froze on me a couple of times on loading screens, typically that was after I died during a boss encounter, so I just had to restart the game, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it happened on more than one occasion. When accessing the map, I had the menu music constantly cut out, like it wasn't just like it would stop playing, but it was like a, a pop, like an audio pop. It was so freaking annoying. Actually, I had this more than once. It was really annoying. Well, you may think the other ones I just mentioned aren't that bad. You're definitely going to think this one's bad. The most egregious problem in this game is that enemy attacks can go through walls. Like there's no collision. Robot laser attacks and mutant projectile attacks were able to reach me from outside despite being behind closed doors. These attacks do a significant amount of damage and you can't really dodge them because you're in tight locations but also you can't see where they're coming from so you just keep getting hit until you die. I don't even I don't know how this is an issue but it is. Last but not least are the difficulty spikes. I'm all for challenging games if it feels like it's fair in a way that if I die it's at no fault of the games, but rather a mistake that I made. What the hell just happened? There are quite a few boss fights in this game where I died upwards of 5 times because of such poor encounter design. I'm not going to name the boss, but there is a certain boss later on in the game that deploys mines while you're fighting it, leaving you to manage these heat-seeking explosives while being attacked by the boss in a small circular arena. Every time you get hit by one of these, it knocks you on your feet, leaving you entirely open to just be stomped on by this guy. Even encounters with the common fodder share this problem. Going from fighting two to three enemies is like whatever, right? It's fine. And then you walk into a room and all of a sudden the door locks behind you and you're faced with 15 enemies that are just bouncing all over the place. It's entirely ridiculous. It just ramps up out of nowhere instead of having an organic ramp up like we as gamers expect in games and a perfect example of how games do this is Doom Eternal. I get that this is Munfish's first game and they absolutely nailed some aspects, but goddamn did they ever create such a messy experience. It really is a love-hate relationship with me. I want to like it a lot more than I do. Every time it draws me in though, it just slaps me across the face with some egregious design choice. 
Munfish is definitely onto something, and they have the creativity and passion to continue to create games. You can see that here, and I hope that they do. I'm just honestly glad that this game is on Game Pass because if I had a dropped full price for this game, I would have been a lot more disappointed than I am right now. I really wanted this game to be good, guys. I really did because it had so much promise, but it just failed drastically in a lot of areas. Honestly, now that I beat it, I don't think I'm ever going to return to it again. I'm sure my thoughts are divisive because it's getting praised by some and like hated on by others, so I don't know. It, the review scores are really mixed with this one. But let me know what you thought about this game. Are you going to play it? Did you buy it? Because maybe you don't have Game Pass, so you bought it. Let me know. Regardless, thank you all for watching. Peace out. Here's your vehicle activation code, Comrade Major.